Live from London, this is BBC News. You have won the Eurovision Song Contest 2023. The Swedish act Lorene wins the Eurovision Song Contest, becoming the first woman to triumph twice. Ukraine's President Zelensky is visiting Berlin as part of a diplomatic tour as Germany pledges its largest weapons package for Kyiv. The most powerful cyclone to affect the Bay of Bengal for more than 10 years makes landfall, bringing record levels of flooding. And the people of Turkey are going to the polls in what could be an era-defining election. Hello, I'm Nancy Kachangira. Thank you for joining us on BBC News. Let's begin by showing you these live pictures of Ukraine's President Zelensky. He is in Germany meeting the Chancellor Olaf Scholz. And uh, these are the pictures of that visit that we have there for you. Uh, so this is, of course, uh, that visit by President Zelensky to Germany. He has been meeting with the Chancellor Olaf Scholz. That's the, the two men there. And uh, of course, yesterday we heard that uh, Germany was sending a military aid package, another military aid package of about $3 billion to Ukraine. So that is a much needed relief for President Zelensky who has been calling for more military support. We can see him there with the Chancellor Olaf Scholz. And of course, this is uh, coming a day after Another meeting that he had with the leadership in Italy where he met the president, the prime minister and the pope. So these are live pictures coming to us now of Ukraine's President Zelensky in Germany. And uh, we have just seen him there meeting with Olaf Scholz, walking down the red carpet, the two men there. And of course, President Zelensky is hoping to shore up more support, uh, military support for uh, what has been called a counter-offensive in Ukraine that uh, Ukraine has been hoping to launch for some time now against Russia, pushing Russian forces back. And a uh, $3 billion military package did come in from Germany. That was announced yesterday, some much needed military support for Ukraine. And this is him now visiting Germany with the Chancellor there, Olaf Scholz. These live pictures coming to us now. But for all that, even many older people are beginning to feel that something okay. new needs to come in. There needs Indeed. to be a break. All right. Jonathan Head, thank you so much. We'll have to leave it there. Do stay with us here on BBC News. The headlines coming up. Live from London, this is BBC News. Ukraine's President Zelensky is visiting Berlin as Germany pledges its largest weapons package for Kyiv. You have won the Eurovision Song Contest 2023. The Swedish act Lorene wins the Eurovision Song Contest, becoming the first woman to triumph twice. Turkey's leaders cast their votes along with the people in one of the most pivotal elections in the country's modern history.
Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Kachingira. For the first time since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, is visiting Germany. In the last hour, he was greeted by the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, with whom he is now holding talks. Germany has just announced its biggest sum of military aid to Ukraine yet, $3 billion. That's about £2.4 billion. Pounds. Well, earlier, Mr. Zelensky was received by President Frank Walter Steinmeier. The trip comes just a day after a visit to Italy, where he met the Italian Prime Minister, the President and the Pope. Let's cross to our correspondent Jenny Hill in Berlin. Uh, Jenny, thank you for joining us. So uh, Germany is definitely pulling out all the stops for President Zelensky on this visit. Do stay with us here on BBC News. I'm Nancy Kachingero. Remember, you can find all our stories on our website. Just search BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. Ukraine's President Zelensky is visiting Berlin as Germany pledges its largest weapons package for Kiev. You have won the European Stock Contest 2023. The Swedish act, Lorreen, wins the Eurovision Song Contest, becoming the first woman to triumph twice. Turkey's leaders cast their votes along with the people in one of the most pivotal elections in the country's modern history. I'm Anna Foster, live in Antakya, where people are coming back to the earthquake zone to vote, and President Erdogan faces his biggest test in years. Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Kachingira. And just as we begin, let's uh, take you straight to Berlin, where the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky are holding a press conference. Mr. Scholz has said that his country will continue to support Ukraine in its war against Russia for as long as needed. He also said that more than a million refugees are now living in Germany. So those are the some, those are some of the lines coming out of that press conference where we're just watching President Zelensky, uh, who has been meeting with his German counterpart, the German president, Frank Walter Steinmeier, earlier today. And he has now met Chancellor Olaf Scholz, and this is the press conference that they are holding. We will bring you more lines from that press conference as they come in. Well, we wait to find out. Anna Foster, thank you very much. Now it's time for a look at today's sport with you. Hello, Chelsea have reached an agreement to make Maurizio Pochettino their new manager. He'll join a little bit later on this year after what will be the club's worst performing Premier League season in nearly 20 years. And that is all the sport and as it turns out, all the music for now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hugh. Well, polls have just closed in Thailand's national elections, which has pitted the country's conservative, military-backed government against two pro-democracy opposition parties. The incumbent leader, Prayuth Chanocha, first seized power in a coup in 2014, before being elected prime minister five years later. His ruling coalition faces a strong challenge from the Pua Thai party of former prime minister Thaksin Shinawatra, led by his daughter, Peitong Tan Shinawatra. But also rising in the opinion polls is the party Move Forward, who've been seeking to mobilize the youth in the election. Let's hear now from our Southeast Asia correspondent, Jonathan Head, who is in Bangkok. Jonathan Head there, and let's briefly take you back to our top story. The German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky have been holding a press conference. In President Zelensky's first visit to Germany since the Russian invasion, Mr. Scholz said that his country will continue to support Ukraine in the war. This awful war has severe geopolitical consequences for everyone, but mostly for the men and women of Ukraine. More than one million of them, women, children and older people, have found protection here in Germany. 
Our citizens here stand in full solidarity to the people who have fled from the brutal attacks. You're watching BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. Ukraine's President Zelensky is visiting Berlin as Germany pledges its largest weapons package for Kyiv. The most powerful cyclone to affect the Bay of Bengal for more than 10 years makes landfall, bringing record levels of flooding. Turkey's leaders cast their votes along with the people in one of the most pivotal elections in the country's modern history. The Swedish act Loreen wins the Eurovision Song Contest, becoming the first woman to triumph twice. Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Kachungira. The German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has said that his country will continue to support Ukraine in its war against Russia for as long as needed. He was speaking after meeting the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Berlin. Let's hear a bit now of what he had said. A fascinating discovery there. Well, do stay here with us on BBC News. I'm Nancy Kachingira. I'll have the headlines for you in just a short while. Do stay with us. Bye for now. visits Berlin as Germany pledges its largest weapons package yet for Kyiv. The most powerful cyclone to affect the Bay of Bengal for more than 10 years makes landfall, bringing record levels of flooding. Turkey's leader cast their votes, leaders cast their votes along with the people in one of the most elections in the country. The Swedish act Loreen wins the Eurovision Song Contest, becoming the first woman to triumph twice. Hello, I'm Nancy Kachingira. The German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has said his country will continue to support Ukraine in its war against Russia for as long as needed. He was speaking after meeting the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Berlin. Germany announced yesterday it was supplying billions of dollars worth of weapons to Kyiv. Let's hear some of what he had said. And now it's time to cross to Chetan for a look at today's sport. Nancy, thank you. We're going to start with uh, Chelsea, who've reached an agreement to make Mauricio Pochettino their new manager. He'll join in the summer after what will be the club's worst performing Premier League season in nearly 20 years. Pochettino, Casey Gornall there, a very sunny Wembley Stadium. We'll keep you up to date with what happens in that game. But that is all your sport for now. Back to you, Nancy. Chetan, thanks very much. And before we go, Pablo Picasso was one of the most famous and influential artists of the 20th century. Famous for his experimental style, he helped develop collage and cubism. But one of his earliest works has now come under intense scrutiny for a secret image hidden for more than a century. Tim Allman's got the story. 
What a great discovery. Well, that's all from me, but do stay here with us on BBC News. I'm Nancy Kachingira. Bye for now. Hello there. I think the biggest weather story across the European continent will be through the central...